Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this is a vermicompost channel or worm channel, and we are going to do an experiment or continue an experiment on if worms can eat protein. And uh, what we have right now is uh, they've been fed uh, deer meatloaf last time. And so we're going to take a look in on that, and then we're also going to feed them up and get them some more bedding because they have made some beautiful castings. Look at that. All right. Uh, looking at some of the questions from people last time while we're just kind of looking through and turning over the, the drier part of the system. Ooh, oh, okay, never mind. Skip the talk. We're going to go straight to the worms. Uh, <laughs> Apparently, I was wrong about what side I fed on, but here we go. I thought it was the other side. But they, uh, here's a nice worm ball made by uh, meat-loving worms. So good worms. Thank you for the worm ball. Here are the, um, had some chicken, chicken bones. Looks like they've really cleaned that one up. That looks like some mold or something there. Uh, but these were cooked chicken bones from chicken soup. And one of the things that I did want to bring up from some of the comments, people were like, oh my God, you're going to cause a breakout of, uh, you know, E. coli or, or something. All of the stuff that I'm putting in here, with the exception of a couple things of eggs, were um, thermal processed. When you do actual canning, where you get the pressure cooker and you basically cook things for... Um, an hour or more, sometimes an hour and a half in the case of meat, at 20 atmospheres. You can look it up. Um, I actually do hold a certificate for thermal processing professionally, uh, so I am 100% sure that the, the food that I have processed for my own home and for my own consumption is 100% food safe. Even though the stuff that I have been feeding is not something that I would eat because it's you know expired because it's too old, it does not mean that it is, has any live microbes such as what would give people like E. coli or something like that. Um, food poisoning comes from live microbes and in the case of thermal processing you've killed things. Oh wow, that, I was wrong. This is where the deer meat was. Ugh. It's been three weeks. I don't think the worms uh, really liked that. It's still there. Hmm, weird. Okay, well, we are going to uh, leave the chicken bones over here, but it's very interesting that the worms have not gotten into that even after three weeks. You can see it there. The answer is no, it doesn't smell good. I am going to give them a huge amount of bedding to kind of dilute this and break it up, and we are not going to feed them. So keeping with the conversation of food safety and people are like, you know, you shouldn't put this on uh, food plants. I'm going to get it tested. I know people who will do this and do micro testing for species and will be able to tell me if there is E. coli, if there is salmonella or other things of a food safety nature. So before I use any of these castings, I will have a look. Uh, but yeah, the worms do not need any more food this week, but we are going to give them a lot of bedding. Mix it in with the other castings so they have more real estate to hang out in. And this is something that you should do in your bins. If, if they do not finish the food, do not give them more food. Um, a lot of people are like, how often do I feed the worms? How much do I feed the worms? The worms are the ones that are in charge. You absolutely have to do what the worms want and need. Uh, they... Uh, they're in control here. So I went through this part thinking this is the part where I had fed because that's where I found all the worms. Uh, but in reality, the worms were working on the bedding rather than working on the deer meat uh, meatloaf, which means it's not ready for them. So in a bin with an ecosystem like this where there are all kinds of bin critters, as I suspected, certain things are gonna have to be broke down by other biological processes other than worms before the worms can eat it. So, just to make sure that they have plenty of room and plenty of things to work on while that uh, meatloaf is still breaking down, we're going to just keep putting in a little bit more bedding here. And that way, um, 
the worms will be, you know, satisfied until that's ready for them. I expect that uh, next time they will be all up in this and we will get to see a worm ball of some worms. And uh, the stuff that I brought down today, they are not going to get any of that. I'm going to take that right back upstairs and put it in the freezer. All right, guys. Well, if you want to see more about this particular series, I have a playlist you can watch right over there. And if you don't want to watch that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video over here. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.